Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the monthly readings. This is going to be for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus. Before we get into your reading Aquarius, I want to give you guys a quick update. For those of you guys that follow our Tarot Lessons 101, we're getting back on schedule starting this Sunday. I apologize. We have just been extremely busy um, being pulled towards many different directions, dealing with business, personal life, etc. Um, but we are getting back on track so just letting you guys know um also we have a lot of your favorite ritualized soaps that are going to be restocked starting march so you guys definitely stay tuned for that for those of you guys that are new to my channel welcome thank you guys so much for joining us for those of you guys that have been with us for a while welcome back my lovelies don't forget to hit that subscribe button that like button that notification bell so you guys can be notified of the videos going up we have tons of new videos coming through as well as tons of spell work um so you guys definitely stay tuned for that all right let's get into your reading aquarius how are you guys doing i hope you guys are doing amazing i want to wish you guys happy valentine's for those of you guys that celebrate for those of you guys that are single i know i've been doing a lot of readings and i know that a lot of you guys are um it's kind of something you can help. You kind of get into this energy of, you know, reminiscing about what it is to be in a relationship, etc. But I don't want you guys to vibrate to that energy. If anything, right now with Venus retrograde, I would highly encourage you guys to celebrate that day, um, to really pamper yourself, to nurture yourself, to um, get yourself a good bottle of wine, to make plans to go out and have dinner or to order dinner for yourself and watch a movie. It's about pampering and giving yourself love. It's about knowing that you do not need anyone to feel fulfilled or to feel complete. However, it is okay to desire or to want or to be open to love, but love starts with ourselves. So again, I would highly encourage you guys to use this time um, to fully embrace and love yourself and nurture and pamper yourself, especially because of Venus retrograde. It is all about realizing or coming to the understanding of what it is that we need and desire, how we want to be treated, how we want to be loved and how we need to be loved. So again, it starts with yourself, my lovelies. All right, let's get into it. Aquarius, spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels. What are the messages for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February 2022? Give us a clear picture of what is unfolding for them. What can they expect for this coming month? February 2022. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. One more shuffle. Here we go. Okay, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Aquarius, the energy surrounding you at this point is the Two of Cups, a soulmate type of connection. For some of you guys, it could be connecting with someone new. For others of you, fully embracing or giving into love, giving yourself the opportunity to love or to be loved. For some of you guys, I am hearing that there is a person that's coming towards you and I feel like it's going to be very unexpected. Um, they're kind of giving me this vision of being propelled or being pushed. So for some of you guys, it could represent literally like bumping into someone and then you just connect with them or start talking, exchange numbers. For others of you, it's going to be very quick and very sudden. And I feel like the majority of those of you guys that will be connecting with someone in this month of February is almost right at the cusp of when you're ready or you've told yourself or convinced yourself i'm fine the way i am and i am not looking for anything or i'm not um chasing after love i feel that that's when it comes in so it's very sudden and very unexpected your next card here is the three of swords so the three of swords is that of caring hurt carrying uh, past traumatic events in regards to relationships or connections. For some of you guys, this could have a lot to do with the preconditioning of, uh, of your childhood. So for some of you guys, it's feeling or almost like accepting this is what it is. And Spirit is telling you it is not what it is. It is what you decide it to be. That is a very clear and specific message. So for some of you guys, this could um, 
represent that you've had a tendency of pushing love away. For others of you, you've been hurt multiple times. It's gotten to the point where perhaps some of you guys have turned a bit cold or cynical in regards to relationships. So it's almost like, you know, not being able to fully, um, it's kind of like when you say I'm ready to love, but then the moment you meet someone, it's like you're so guarded that it's really hard for them to read if you're interested or not. And you have this, like this energy of I can do it all on my own. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But when you lead with that, you are definitely sending mixed signals. You are telling the world, I'm not looking for anything, when in reality, you're telling yourself, I'm ready and I'm open. If it if it's not happening, it's because it's not happening. But we, got, we kind of have to check ourselves. We kind of have to look in the mirror and really ask ourselves those questions. You know, am, am I... Am I saying I don't want love because I really don't want love? Or is it because I'm scared of getting hurt again? Or is it because I am portraying myself to be self-independent and strong? Um, but deep down, you know, I lay in bed and I feel sad or I feel lonely sometimes. You know what I mean? It's asking those difficult questions, um, not in a negative way but in a self-healing way, in a way of fully accepting I'm ready for love and that means I'm open to love. Or I am happy and content in my life and I am not really looking for anything, um, but just keeping your options open. There's nothing wrong with either one, but what I'm saying is really ask yourself those questions because I feel like with the Three of Swords, it's like, kind of like the person that says I have moved on from the past but every time you meet someone you're holding them accountable to what you've experienced in the past or holding them accountable to what someone specifically did to you in the past you got to let go of that energy Aquarius all right we have the ace of swords communication coming in clarity inside understanding two of swords Understanding in regards to the situation where you haven't really wanted to either um, see the reality of it or face the music, so to speak. Um, for some of you guys, this could be, again, the conversation that we we're talking about in regards to relationships. It's fully being able to see things really for what they are and realizing what it is that you want. And finally, releasing yourself from the chains of the past, of stuckness, of no newness, no movement, uh, releasing yourself from that seven of wands, guarding yourself, pushing people away. You can't sit there and say, you know, um, it must have not been the person or it must have not been the right one for me because they didn't fight for me. Well, one thing is fighting for someone you care for. And another thing is if you constantly are being rejected or pushed away, ain't nobody gonna have time for that. You feel me? Nobody has time for that. Um, it's a giving and taking. And at this point, the people you've dealt with, like you kind of push them and, you know, shove them and going through hoops and jumping all over the place to prove to you something. You need to understand that the other person may also have been hurt in the past. Doesn't give them the right to test you. Doesn't give them the right to hold you accountable for what other people have done to them in their past. And it's the same thing with you. So seven of wands is that a uh, Put your defenses down, Aquarius. We get it. You're independent. We get it. You don't need nobody. We get it. Doesn't mean that you're not worthy of it. Or it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you desiring to have a deep connection. Or not. You know what I mean? Uh, it could be the other way around for some of you guys. It is a general reading um, where people may often ask you or often annoy you be when are you getting married when are you having kids when this when that and it's like you feel like you constantly have to um fight your way into proving like i'm different i don't need that or etc cetera, etc cetera. but i feel for the majority of you guys it's the opposite it's you telling the world you know you don't need no one but deep down inside really feeling or craving and desiring that deep connection uh, a lot of the times people often think that Aquarians um, are meant to be free 
And the truth of the matter is, is that love is free. The moment you meet a person or find someone that is willing to accept you for who and what you are, and that is not going to shackle you, that is going to love you freely and unconditionally, selflessly, uh, without giving you any limitations or giving you their love with conditions, that's when you flourish. And it doesn't mean it's not attainable. There are people out there that way. You know what I mean? So again, it's about being okay with what it is that you want and not having the need to express or uh, prove something to the world. Now your next card here is the Ten of Pentacles and the Tower card, Four of Cups. All right, my lovely. So what they're showing me here is the Tower card could represent, and again, keep in mind, we are currently in Venus retrograde. For some of you guys, it's going through or experiencing... Um, a lot of looking to the past of nostalgia of what you've been through where you're at right now. Um, for some of you guys, you guys are really being tested in regards to your finances, in regards to careers, or in regards to relationships in general. Um, but the reason for this, it's almost like you've had this idea or this way of looking at the world or looking or even viewing yourself um, and because others have learned to accept you that way, it's like now I can't openly say, you know, that I am wanting commitment because then it's going to come off like I am not being genuine. Um, it's okay to change your mind, Aquarius. It's okay. That's part of life. We need to grow. You know, I'm sure that when you were 15 or 17 years old, <laughs> you wanted something really bad. And now being at the age that you are, I'm sure, you know, things have changed that's part of life. It's about growth. It's about expansion. It's about wisdom. It's okay to change your mind. And it's okay to want something different. It's okay to want the opposite of what you thought you wanted a year or two years ago. Do you see what I'm saying? Life is about growth. If you are with the same mentality or in the same place that you were a year ago, then there hasn't been any growth. If your mind or what you want and desire has changed, then that's a blessing because it means you're growing. It means you're expanding. And that's what it's about. So the tower could represent being challenged in your foundation or what you thought your foundation was, what you thought you really wanted versus where you're at right now. And perhaps for some of you guys, your expectations or your desires have changed and there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. It's part of life, like I said. So it's about being authentic and being true to yourself, asking yourself those hard questions to be able to really align yourself to what it is that you genuinely want and being able to open your arms up to the world and accept or embrace the blessings that they're bringing or will be bringing to you, Aquarians. I want to reading and we'll see each other soon. Till then, bye.